Welcome to... Ripsies Family Fun Night. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody, I'm Chase Will. I'm Hi, I'm Lyra. <laughs> we're not going to take two. <laughs> this is Cryptease Family Fun Night. And tonight we're discussing Woo! Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. One of <laughs> the greatest quintessential 80s movies I've ever seen. Luckily, I saw it for the third time today. <laughs> Uh, Razor, you chose this movie. Oh, um, a quick intro. She's actually in the band based on this movie, The Mary Lou's. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, as you said, I play in a band called The Mary Lou's. We are spooky, yuki, sometimes kooky horror rock from New Jersey. Um, I sing and I play uh, tenor ukulele. Uh, and yeah, so we're the Mary Lou's. We're based off the movie Hello Mary Lou Prom Night Two, and we dress up as undead prom people and play electric ukuleles, and have a good time. I think my favorite song is, um, was it the, the Bruce Campbell one? Um, oh, I wish Bruce Campbell was my boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find those videos online, too, on YouTube. You guys have your own channel, right? Yes, we do. It's youtube.com slash the Mary Lou's. <laughs> so after this video, be sure to go click on their channel and check that out, because I thought it was awesome. Yes. <laughs> I actually met you through a previous guest of ours, uh, Dylan Greenberg. Yes, actually, Dylan directed... Uh, the video for I Wish Bruce Campbell was my boyfriend. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so discussing tonight's movie, uh, there is a central theme this time because I'm sensing one. Lucas, did you have a, a beer of the week this week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chase. Because <laughs> every week you have a weird new beer. <laughs> I'm thinking we should it's start because that thing. It might as well be. It's not even a weird one, but I have... I'll I'll say the name and if sponsor us, um, that would be wonderful. <laughs> they might I copyright have... strike us. I mean, it can go one way or the other. <laughs> well, then we'll just show it on camera. What is that one? I can't see. Swill Dog Apple Pie Cider. Ooh. Ooh. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty great. Enjoy it. How's the apple pie taste? It can kind of go one way or the other. It's not too sweet. It's not too like strong either. I mean, it's like cinnamon nutmeg that kind of thing so it's ooh, and going along but it was so sweet too so going along with tonight's beer of the week i actually have a drinking game because we always seem to make one in post we never actually announce it on the show <laughs> uh tonight you is once but yeah but you know i was already drunk by that point so it doesn't really count <laughs> uh, you right you right <laughs> tonight's is every time one of us says um in a sentence take a swig i am drinking Truly, because these things are pretty phenomenal, actually. Ooh. You have a water XC or anything? I have nothing. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, I failed papers. this game already. <laughs> <laughs> or you win. One of those two things. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depends, depends on your progress. <laughs> okay, so tonight we're discussing Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Like I said, one of the best 80s movies there is. It has a little bit of Exorcist, a little bit of Nightmare on Elm Street, a little bit yeah. of Carrie. It's got just about everything in one movie, and it somehow works. Oh yeah, absolutely. I um, I actually, one of the reasons we chose to name the band after this movie is we were trying to think of iconic women in horror. And um, it was like, there's not a lot, you know? It's, it's, a, it's been pretty underrepresented. Uh, and one of the first ones to come to mind is Mary Lou, uh, because she's obviously a protagonist in the film. And we were like, who's a badass, woman in horror who's you know a main character and we're like mary lou so that's kind of how the name came to be i also like that really quick intro in the very first scene you know exactly who she is she goes to that confession booth and it seems really yeah. sincere at first it, it kind of sets up like it's going to be the same tone as the first movie and then she goes mm -hmm. i loved every minute of it <laughs> yeah no that's i love that scene. we actually used to play that dialogue sometimes before our song Mary Lou uh, live because like it's just it's perfect like writing on the lipstick in the confessional and everything it's great for a good time call the Mary Lou's <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> Lucas this is your first time seeing it what did you think what any uh, initial thoughts I, I I have to be honest I wasn't crazy about this now like I watched really I watched the first film last night because I hadn't seen that either, so it was I had to do a double feature this in. Um, but I watched the first film last night, picked up the second one today after work, and it... I, I'm... 
The second is better than the first, which you do not see often in any movie, much less horror. Yeah. But I still... I don't know. I wasn't gaga over it, but I don't think it's bad. It's it's kind of like you said, Chase. It's kind of like that classic... I, I described it to one of my friends. It's like, it's classic 80s schlock, but it's fun. Like, it's yeah. fun. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and, like, shit on it. I don't think it was a bad movie. It wasn't my speed, but, like, it was all right. It's That's definitely a- an acquired taste, I feel like. Uh, it's very campy. Uh, and I personally feel like it's a good balance of that campy horror like it it knows what it is and it plays into that which which I enjoy about it um yeah I I've definitely had people that are just like I I hate that movie most people don't even know it exists it's this like you know kind of obscure 80s Canadian horror film um and when it came out it had very mixed reviews so it's kind of one of those things where it's I feel like it's a little hidden gem and then when people don't know about it I'm just like check it out like you got to see this movie and then people are always like oh my god I love it or they're like yeah I wasn't a fan but it, it, it feels like one if somebody asked if somebody asked me because people know like oh well you write for a horror site like what can you recommend and if somebody's looking for something like campy 80 schlocky kind of thing this one I might be like just pull from out up from out my sleeve or something yeah. <laughs> I think a reviewer <laughs> on a letterbox said it best. He described it as it's the exorcist meets a nightmare on Elm street meets Degrassi high school meets Carrie meets Jason goes to hell. The final Friday meets <laughs> Canada. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, and it, Canada. Wasn't, no. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a high budget movie. I think their budget was like 2.5 million, which I mean, for the effects and stuff they tried to pull off, it's definitely not a huge budget movie, but it actually does get a lot of comparisons to Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and even, believe it or not, uh, Blue Velvet. Um, and I know they were kind of trying to almost piggyback off the success of Nightmare on Elm Street with a lot of the surrealist, almost dreamlike sequences in the film, um, which I think, I think it's kind of cool that you have that in the horror movie because a lot of those, even if you don't like the movie, like a lot of those scenes are kind of just neat, like the chalkboard scene where she melts into the chalkboard or uh, my friend Steph calls it the strawberry milkshake scene with the lockers because <laughs> oh, when it God. comes in, it I... looks like strawberry milkshake. <laughs> I popped for that kill. I don't know what I was expecting with that, but then all of a sudden crunch, I was like, oh, <laughs> like I lost it. My yeah. question during that kill was, how do you explain that? Like, a janitor walks in, right? and the lockers just kind of crunch together. Like, yeah. how, how do you explain that? You turn that? down, walk out, and I don't get paid enough for this bullshit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> I gotta say, the effects, though, in this movie were really well done for an 80s movie. Like, the horse scene in the bedroom and the mirror dissolving, like, all that, although it was kind of piggybacking off Nightmare on Elm Street, it was really yeah. well done. Like, it didn't look too, too cheesy, I guess. Yeah, um, I, I wish I could remember the name of the effects coordinator, but I know he was, he did do A Nightmare on Elm Street, and um, who, who kind of was the effects coordinator, I can't remember his name, but, um, but yeah, I know, I know that chalkboard scene, it, they gave it like a week just to film, it's like a 45 second scene, and I think they said every hour cost them $2,000. Oh, wow. Oh my god. To, to film that one scene, so... I mean, yeah, they, I love that they went, like, balls to the wall for the effects, because I feel like if they took shortcuts on that, it just wouldn't have been as cool. Yeah, looking at the budget, you hear $2 million, you think that's a lot, but that's, like, yeah. shoestring, especially for the times. Like, you got oh, the yeah. effects, you got to pay everybody on set by the hour, even the extras, and mm-hmm. you got craft services, get everything. And yeah. like you said, the effects, they weren't cheap. Like, they, they put yeah. some money into those. Absolutely. Also, I like, um, okay, I gotta ask, does anybody have any favorite quotes from this movie? Because there were so many. I feel like if you met, I feel like if you gave a quote from this movie, people would either know exactly what you're talking about or they would look at you funny. Yeah, I, um, I mean, like, I love, like I said, the iconic scene in the beginning where they show the confessional with, you know, for a good time, call Mary Lou. And then I also love, like, the, the reoccurring quote when she possesses Vicky. And she's just like, you know, see you later, alligator. And she kind of jumps into that 50 slang. And I just think those, those kinds of ties are really, really cool. 
Lucas, you have a favorite I, quote? I don't know if it's my favorite, but it made, it was just it it got the biggest reaction out of me when the kid said when literally mentioned the Exorcist. Uh-huh. And the kid's like, your other so sucks in hell. And I'm yeah. like, that sounds like the edited for TV version for the line. It doesn't need to be. Like, this wasn't yeah. a TV movie. We don't need to edit it. But it, it, just, yeah. it made me chuckle. I like I the also- line. Um, he was talking. She said, there's no God. There's no heaven. And you know what, my, you know what pissed me off the most? Oh, yeah. No, no wings. fucking wings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's also a good one. I like, um, I like when, uh, when the... Um, the audio kid, the the video guy, he's like, life's a joke, and then you croak. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Speaking that scene. That was pretty funny. Speaking of that kid, I just, so many things about this just made me laugh. And I don't know <laughs> if it was meant to, but it was this, it was an endearing, well, then a <laughs> kind of thing. Oh yeah. my god, it's wonderful. But like, <laughs> the bit where where that kid, like, I forget, girl's name like goes down on it in the booth and that and just the sounds he makes i'm like it sounds like he got a cramp like a charlie horse it's <laughs> not those don't sound like guy getting a blowjob that sounds yeah. like guy got a charlie horse possibly while getting a blowjob um, <laughs> it'll be both yeah it happens, yeah. It happens. <laughs> that's all i'm saying I also like how the story kind of shifted about two, I think about two thirds of the way through, there was like a really big shift in the story. It goes from the girl, you know, finding out who this thing is to being full possessed by it. It's like a whole yeah. tone shift. This is like a couple movies in one, actually. That's what I like about it. <laughs> yeah. It, and it's, like I said, I, you were saying like, you're not sure if it's supposed to be funny or things. I, I personally think it was like, I think they knew that those kinds of things were just so over the top that they were just like, you know, F it, we're gonna, we're just gonna be ridiculous about it. Because oh, yeah. I don't know if y'all ever saw the third installment. There's a um, third? Yeah. Uh, there are like four or so I saw on MDA. Oh, really? Yeah. So two and three are the only ones who have Mary Lou as a main character. And they had a different actress play Mary Lou in the third one, which was very strange to me because even though mm-hmm. um, least Lisa Shirage, Shiraj, I don't know how to say her name, but she plays Mary Lou as she is in the beginning of the movie and the very end, um, who I thought was awesome. Like, I wish she did more. Like, I wish there was more of her in that movie. And then the second one, they brought back Mary Lou, and she was in the entire film. Like, I was kind of disappointed they didn't bring back that actress. They had a totally different actress. The third one is over the top. It is, like, just camp. It is just ridiculous. Um, it's called, oh, is it Kiss of Death? I think it's Prom Night, like Kiss of Death, I want to say is what it's called. I have it on DVD because of course I do. But um, yeah, if you want to see even more ridiculous, that like it starts off with Mary Lou in a chorus line in hell. Like <laughs> it's just, it's out there. So, <laughs> so it's like more of like a it's Nightmare a 6 or so. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Freddy's Dead of the franchise, I guess. Jesus. <laughs> I also like how self-aware the humor is. Like like you said earlier, they knew what they were doing with the humor and the dialogue. It wasn't supposed to be like natural high school Degrassi kind of dialogue. It was just yeah. snippy, funny, referential dialogue. Yeah. Like we saw it in the, the experiment in the beginning with the potato. <laughs> He's saying, you know, this will go down the annals of scientific history. And we yeah. all know how painful that can be. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that was, uh, that came what, was so what when I was watching it, I'm like, it's animals, you egg, and then he swallows it up with the, with the, and we all know how painful that would be, I'm like, okay, he's being a smartass, this yeah. sounds like, and I, te- and I teach high school, so, like, that's the coolest thing I expect one of my students to say, that's fully just that, eh, eh, and I'm like, <laughs> I laugh, but I can't, but I see you. <laughs> So let's uh, go back a little bit. Razor, what is your history with horror? Like, what got you into the genre and what effect, or I guess what uh, effect this movie have on you as a kid? Like, when you first time you saw it, what was it like? I I didn't actually see this one as a kid. This is one I saw much later on as an adult. Um, but I started watching horror probably too young. <laughs> I was probably allowed to Five watch years old. horror way younger than I, I was. I always have this hilarious story. Um, because 
uh, there's two horror movies that I, I kind of give credit as my first horror movies. I can't remember which one I saw first, but I'm pretty sure it was Dead Alive. Um, I remembered mm -hmm. when I was a child, I would have like these dreams about the lawnmower scene in Dead Alive. Oh and I don't remember watching that movie as a child. I just thought my brain made up this scene and I was like, what is wrong with me as a child? <laughs> and much later on, I watched this movie and I was like, that's it, that's that scene. And I had thought like all those years I had made it up in my head. And then um, I was like, no, I just watched it. And apparently it traumatized me enough as a child to have reoccurring <laughs> dreams about it. Um, but I had seen Dead Alive and I had seen this movie called Castle Freak when I was very young. And Castle Freak is another one, if you hadn't seen it, like it's just weird and out there and nobody knows about it, but it's just like a bizarre horror movie that I shouldn't have been watching as a child. Um, but like my dad and I would always watch The Twilight Zone and they would let me stay up to watch Tales from the Crypt when I was a kid. So I was super, like, right from the start. One of my first franchises I loved was Chucky. Um, oh, yeah. Still do. Still adore Chucky. I actually did a photo shoot yesterday as Tiffany. So oh, I can see um, that. That was fun for Valentine's Day. Um, but yeah, it's just like, as far as I can remember, like, it's always just been a thing, and especially classic horror. I've always really been into, like, black and white horror, like Nosferatu and the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and all that kind of stuff. I always was super fascinated with, like, the old school realm of horror. It's funny you should mention Dead Alive, because the only thing I remember from that movie, other than Peter Jackson directing it, is like the ninja priest who says, yeah. like, I kick ass for the Lord. I kick ass for the Lord. Yes. <laughs> the best thing. And the one we're seeing is just iconic. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I think they used a stop motion animation on that, didn't they? That's a, that's... Like the creature, like the monkey at the yeah, beginning. Was that like that. claymation or something? Yeah, it was could, definitely. It was, it was in the 90s. I can believe it. Yeah. Lucas. Uh, what was your favorite part of this movie? You said you didn't like it a whole lot, but if you had to pick something redeeming. The, what we were talking about earlier, the locker, the locker kill, the strawberry milkshake. I, for as little as we saw, you know, we didn't see any aftermath. We saw the little bit of like, blood and guts and juices and we come out of the front of the little slits in the locker. But just that, like, you don't know, like, how is this going to end up? Like, I think it's going to be kind of that, gotcha moment and then she's like no crunch and i was like <laughs> literally, very rarely my joy like pop for that yeah and, like watching a movie but that was one where it was just a, oh <laughs> nice i like that too because it's kind of subverting expectations because i was waiting for her to like reappear in front of the locker through like the slits and you see her face yeah. pop up yeah it was kind of like nope <laughs> just like just get it over with done <laughs> and of course, in that same scene, you have like the gratuitous uh, female on female shower scene. Yeah. That was a really 80s thing to do. It was. And you know what's actually pretty interesting is after the movie has come out and aged, it's actually become a staple in like queer culture as like a queer feminist horror movie. Almost kind of how people see uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Um, so it's almost mm -hmm. like it's female counterpart a lot of times in comparisons, uh, which I thought was actually kind of a cool thing that happened with it. Um, but yeah, like the, the shower scene with her friend and she's like trying to kiss on her and everything and, and all that. Um, one of my favorites is when she's accepting her prom queen and, you know, obviously like she gets shot and, and then Mary Lou emerges from her body. And I'm just like, it's so ridiculous to just have like this zombie-ish looking Mary Lou, like just sprouting from her chest that I'm just like, I don't know, what is it? And then like, there's no explanation as to why she's fine after that. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's supernatural, like suspension of disbelief kind of thing. But I'm just like, but her body was ripped in half. Like, how is she okay? Through the power of prayer. <laughs> yeah, like going into the movie, like I started like reading into this movie a little bit because it's something I do, like try to find like deeper messages in the movie, I guess. And uh -huh. I think this one is like kind of about rebellion because when she becomes Mary Lou, all these things I think you can see in her already start to mm -hmm. just surface. Like 
her mom is really overbearing and she just throws that bitch through the front door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like Mary Lou almost gives her kind of like a little bit of what she always sort of wanted to do, like that bad streak in her, like all the things that she wished she could have said or done, like, you know, like having sex with her boyfriend and telling off her mom. I mean, I don't know if she secretly wanted to make out with her dad, but that happened, so. That scene had me a little yeah. fucked up, because I was like. That was fucking weird. This I has just... weird <laughs> connotations, first of all. There's some weird connotations there, because the dad yeah. does not try very hard to get away from that kiss. No. <laughs> He's kind of like leaning into it, like, ooh, this is happening. He's just like, all right, I didn't do it. <laughs> and then the mom walks in, and she doesn't even acknowledge that the dad is kissing the daughter. She no. goes, you harlot. Yeah, that was, I was like, what the fuck? Like, why are you yelling at him? That was a weird ass scene. The mom was probably my least favorite character for the right reasons. Like, there wasn't yeah. anything bad about how it was performed. It was straight up, like, you're supposed to hate this bitch. Yeah. Like, the part where the dad asked the boyfriend to stay, and she's like, she doesn't need guests tonight. She always speaks for the daughter. Yeah, and you're like, you yeah. Bitch. <laughs> Lucas, you're about to say something. Though... Oh, sorry. I interrupted Not... you, sorry. It's interesting, though, you're talking about, like, finding deeper meaning. And I, I, I noticed that when Vicky, or Mary Lou in the vessel of Vicky, however you want to put it, puts the mom through the window, it's interesting how you see her dress, like, come up to, like, her thigh. Mm-hmm. Like, her, like, that long, like, modest dress gets lifted up. And it's, like, it, it's, it's an interesting, I doubt it was planned like that. Mm-hmm. But I wonder a little bit if it was, or if that was like, if we're kind of banking on that because it's kind of that, you know, mom is so modest and proper and God fearing, and then now with this demonic force that is Mary Lou in the house, now everything's gone to hell, and like, it was just an interesting like thing that I don't know if I was even looking for, it, but I saw it and I couldn't unsee it. I get that. Uh, something else we like to do is talk about scenes we would like to have seen in the movie that weren't there. If you could like insert a deleted scene that you would create yourself, what would it be? Oh wow! Oh man, that's a good one. Hmm. I think mine, and this is purely for the comedic effect, for reasons yeah. I explained earlier, would be the kid in the boot getting head. Cut it into something for like thirty seconds come back and girls like pissed off storming out like that's it just something dumb <laughs> like that i if the tea slacker let's just have fun with it how about the spongebob like... like 10 seconds later <laughs> 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 i was like the beginning with that quote where they're backstage behind the curtains and he's like god bless america <laughs> oh like, yeah it's a big free country yeah <laughs> that was funny as hell i think I don't know if it's a particular scene, but like I like I mentioned before, the actress who played Mary Lou as herself, um, I just would have loved to have seen more of her in the movie. Like I know, you know, obviously she possessed Vicky, but I would have really loved to have seen her do more just because like, I just really loved her in that part. And then like, after I had seen that movie, I just got obsessed with her. And I was like, what else has she done? And I'm like, not much. I was so bummed because I'm like, she was beautiful and she played the part so well. And I was just like, I just wanted more of her. And she just was only in the beginning and the end and i was kind of bummed about that yeah i think i would like more of like the build up because even though the movie does spend a sufficient amount of time building up her presence in her until they actually formally introduce her at the prom yeah i kind of want more of that because i really leaned into the nightmare on elm street influences in this like that's why i like the most about it yeah and i feel like if nightmare hadn't happened this movie wouldn't have happened which would have been oh, a tragedy yeah. absolutely but yeah, if they would have maybe made more of that and a little less Exorcist, I think I would have liked it a little more. So I guess like another couple scenes of like, you know, the dream state. They had the weird shit too, but she's getting like caught in a spider web and stuff. And yeah. she's in that deserted locker bay. I was like, this is straight out of Nightmare 1 or yep. 3 or 4. I think on the subject of being like Exorcist, the Father Coop character just... I have problems with that character and I'm not entirely sure why. Okay. Just, like, the way he talks, the way, like, he's saying that 
incantation to like draw when he first like even entertains the notion that this could be like a spirit or a ghost or a demon whatever the way he acts is very <laughs> i don't know i don't know if the actor was just that boring in real life or what his lines <laughs> were flat okay but what the one line that or the one exchange that killed me is an i don't know if it's the dad but when they're talking back and forth and um and the gentleman's like, you've been celibate for too long. Turns around, turns to Father Cooper. Well, she can't touch me. Just that double entendre made me chuckle. But yeah. This, the, 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 like you said, Chase, the dialogue of this is great. But like, the Father Cooper character as a whole, I understand what he was there, but his presence was just a, just kind of an ick me. I don't know. Mm. I get that. I, I, I think especially as the priest, like I like the younger version like but i mean obviously he wasn't in long enough for me to hate him really um but once he is the priest like he he isn't one of the stronger characters i i can definitely agree with that i like uh i think uh changing the subject a little bit like the costuming choices for these characters like the kids mm-hmm. especially like they all have their own individual style you see so much of the 80s in that yeah mm-hmm. Like especially like the punk 80s too. I especially liked uh, the girl in the beginning. I wish she'd had more screen time before she got totally choked out by her cape and almost decapitated and then hung. Yes. I feel yeah, like that- no, I like that character a lot as well. I wish they would have had a little bit more of her in there, but... She's kind of given like a really, I guess, substandard characterization too. Like there's a boy I liked, he doesn't like me. I'm broken now. I was like, give her a little bit more than that. You know, give her something individual because that seems yeah. so generic i guess yeah i was like, like for um, her to be like uh, for her to be like the red herring or like they they think it's it's a suicide at first it just felt like oh come on really yeah, yeah. also yeah. like how mary lou was kind of like messing with her at first because she drags her in front of that thing like she's gonna cut her head off yeah. and then she hangs her i was like that's kind of cool i she's feel got like a sense it, of humor <laughs> definitely i feel like there's so many big kill scenes in that like they're all productions that that one just kind of since it's like one of the first big ones it gets a little like overlooked but you like you said like she almost like plays with her food where it's like i'm gonna do that you can <laughs> your head off no we're gonna hang you <laughs> i feel like mean girls might have been a little bit inspired by this movie because <laughs> she, she was the ultimate mean girl <laughs> yeah essentially she had no remorse for anything no she was just I would like argue... <laughs> she was just like i'm hot argue... and rebellious that's it Oh yeah, I would argue the kids in the first movie inspired Mean Girls songs because those kids were dicks. You know, I gotta say, I never actually made it through the first movie. The first one I just didn't like. The second one I was hesitant to watch it, but I was really glad I did. It's it's so funny how they approached the the series. I mean, I I feel weird even calling it that because it's so disconnected from the first movie. Um, and obviously, like you have Jamie Lee Curtis, who is a is a big name and especially in horror as a female, but um, I, I'm not a fan of the first one, honestly, either. I've watched it, I have it, because I have, like, I have this movie on several DVDs, because, you know, it's just one of those things, like, I bought it, and then it came in a collection, and then it came in another collection, um, and I was like, I'll give Prom Night another chance, and it's just, like, it doesn't hold my attention. I just find it very slow. I wasn't into it, but... I love this one. Like, I do. I, I feel like the pacing was good, and it kept my attention, and it was campy, and it was fun. But, yeah, it's, like, literally just in name. is And I and they both happen at Hamilton High is really the only connection between them. Mm. It's always funny how in series where certain things keep happening at the same locale, like it's a high school or it's a yeah. haunted ground, people in real life, I think, would be like, this is a little coincidental, you know? <laughs> Maybe don't bring kids to school anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Lucas, what about you? Um, if you were to, I guess, recast this movie, who would you recast if they're remaking it now? Like, what actors present day would you have play the roles? Oh, I could see. Hmm. I could see maybe Jessica Roth from uh, Happy Death Day as Vicky. I think she could be I mean, pre possession Vicky. I don't know who I would have Mary Lou, but I could see. I could see her as an entertaining Vicky. What about you? Gosh, I'm so bad at this game. Um, I don't know. It would be hard for me to think of someone 
I'd want to see in that in that part. I don't know. Honestly, I would have to really think about it. I don't know. Like, like, first one comes to mind is Emma Roberts, just because that's the character she like almost always plays. Is like okay. the, the really kind of mean girl type. Yeah. It's hard to think of many others though that would do that well and be believable. Yeah. Lucas, do you have any other thoughts on the movie? Um, let me look through the notes here. Um, we talked before how it's kind of like kind of a quintessential like 80s film and just all of the references all of the you know the teacher's name mr craven i think it was mm-hmm. kelly's last name is head and lauder like all yeah. of the all of the references that if you're, even if you're not paying attention you're gonna catch a couple if you know anything about horror yeah and i think i think that's what i can at least appreciate about the movie is that it really is kind of it, it feels like a horror movie's horror movie. It feels mm-hmm. very like a a love letter, like a consummate kind of production, while still acknowledging, okay, we're gonna be a little stupid because it's kind of what we have to do. But <laughs> you have any final thoughts on the movie? Um, yeah, I just to kind of piggyback off what you were saying. Um, I I definitely appreciate that about this movie, how it is almost a tribute to um, other horror movies, and and it it just kind of almost gives you a little bit of a sprinkling of references. Like you said, if you're not completely paying attention, you still catch a couple. And then the rewatch value when you are like, oh, wait, there's like this kind of stuff hidden in there. You go back and you find new things. And that's what I love about watching a movie is being able to go back and see something I didn't see before, even several times after watching it. Um, So that's what I really like about it. Um, like you said, I think that's perfect what you said. It's like a horror movie's horror movie. It, you know, it knows what it is. It just has a love of horror in general throughout it. And it's cool. It's nice to see like a badass female character take the reins in a horror movie. And, you know, it's getting more and more over the years, like, but it was kind of one of the originals to sort of do that. And I love that about it. So... I'm really surprised Blumhouse hasn't jumped on this yet to remake it. Oh wow, yeah. Well, I know, I know it was remade in like 2000. The first one was remade in like 2008 or something, but yeah. it was it was eh. horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to remake 80s movies and make it good. Yeah. Uh, you just can't really catch that same tone with them. But uh, Razor, where can people find you? What do you have coming up? I mean, with everything going on in the world being, you know, pretty much shut down. Unfortunately, most of our shows and stuff have been canceled, but you can catch us on everywhere, social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. We have the YouTube, as I mentioned before, but everything is under the Mary Lou's, Lou spelled L-O-U-S. And yeah, other than that, uh, check us out on YouTube. We have a couple music videos. We have a lot of live performances on there. We're on Bandcamp. Our first album came out last year. Uh, it's called It's Not Who You Come With, It's Who Takes You Home. Uh, and that's available on Bandcamp. And we are also streaming on everything you could think of, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, even TikTok. So definitely check us out, Mary Lou's and once the world is done imploding, we'll definitely be back to playing live stuff. We'll have some new stuff for everyone, and yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, this has been Crypty's Family Fun Night, talking about Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. I'm Chase Will. I'm Luke Kleiner. And I'm Razor. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody have a great night. Episode 500 coming next week. Woo! <laughs> next time.